The ovipositor almost sunk in the wood, the sheaths sharply bent. A typical close view of the insect at work. Withdrawal of the ovipositor. And cleaning up. The parasite in action, with the ovipositor inserted in the wood, reaching the larva below. Previous to egg laying, some fluid is probably injected into the victim's body to paralyze it. A larva which was too active would be a grave menace to the safety of the eggs laid upon its body. Both larva and pupa of the wood wasp are victimized by the parasite. The egg of the parasite lying upon the body of the wood wasp pupa. It is elongate and sausage shaped and has a long curled tail behind it. The tail, four times as long as the egg body, is a reservoir into which the fluid contents of the egg are passed during its passage down the very narrow channel of the ovipositor. The egg is always laid outside the body of the host, in contrast to the egg of Ibelia, which is laid within the host's body. An egg highly magnified, showing the embryo within. The powerful curved jaws of the larva are prominent. On closer examination, the breathing tubes also appear as thin, thread-like, branching lines running along the side of the body. The larva cuts its way out of the egg after two and a half to three days. It is about one twelfth of an inch long with a powerfully armored head and a soft tapering body. The larva is now finding its way out of the egg and in so doing it makes considerable use of the tail in freeing itself from the eggshell. Once free of the eggshell, the young larva prepares to settle down upon the body of the victim. Although quite devoid of legs, it is able to progress by sinuous movements of its body, the paralyzed larva offering no resistance. The destruction of the host is extremely rapid. By the end of two weeks, the larva has entered into its third stage. We see it here, lying beside the remains of, its, of the host, a fair-sized wood wasp pupa.
In three weeks, the larva is full grown. It now occupies practically the entire cell. The remains of the host are lying heaped up at one end. The larva's head showing how it differs from that of Ibelia. The jaws are invisible. The black hook-like structure in the center of the head is part of the lower lip prolonged into a formidable spine. The larva spends the winter in the wood cell protected by a slight cocoon. In the spring it passes into the pupal stage. An early pupa a series of pictures showing the development of the pupa. After a pupal stage of a few weeks, the adult casts the pup pupal shroud and cuts its way to freedom. The insect emerges a fresh actor in an old scene. Her life work commences with the coming of another summer and for instruction she is dependent upon the instincts handed on to her by her forebears. <laughs> 